All glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's the author and finisher of our faith, and without him, nothing is possible. Welcome to Faiths and Gates Ministries. In this latest edition of Bell's Leagues, click that subscribe button, click on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. To support our ministries, go to our Cash App at dollar sign Fates Gates, F A T E S G A T E S, and the number 33. So thank you for your support. Let's get right to it. In part one, of this mini series, I was explaining how R. Kelly has some inner assurance, overconfidence, if you will, that his 2008 acquittal granted him some sort of lifetime immunity, at least from the judicial system. Okay. This is why I believe he was comfortable enough to tell the young journalists the things, the small things that the feminist movement will use to prosecute someone, at least in the courts of public opinion, telling her how beautiful she was, that she's very beautiful, commenting on her appearance, even telling her that he loves her too. Although it was tongue-in-cheek, you can see in part one, if you watch part one you of this series, you will see how she was using that and just sliding in these undertones to concoct or depict an image and paint a narrative of R. Kelly as a pedophile. Now, I'm not saying that R. Kelly is innocent, but according to rule process, if you prosecute someone they are innocent until proven guilty. They are entitled to due process. There shouldn't be a middleman in the media. Okay, the media plays a lot of games, as I've stated many times on this channel, something that's called public witchcraft. Okay, now Gail King also mentioned shortly after our Kelly interview in the CBS studio, she mentioned that prior to that interview, some years back, she met R. Kelly at a party. Now, I found this very interesting because I don't believe that meeting was by mistake. Okay, I believe that Gail King was assigned to R. Kelly, maybe even as his handler. Okay, and this is why she had so much success in this interview getting the reaction out of R. Kelly that the female reporter from the Huffington Post in part one failed to do so. And a lot of a lot of people who receive success in Hollywood they're groomed for many years. And many of these politicians, they're groomed, okay, to perform a job, especially when they're getting out in the public. These are not just regular people. Okay, Gail King is a part of the occult. Oprah Winfrey is a part of the occult. And Gail, Gail King is a pupil. Okay, she's been trained to do this job. And she re 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 receives high praise for her composure and how she conducted herself in an interview with R. Kelly. But more on that later. Of course, over these 15 years, from 2004 to 2019, they could have prosecuted R. Kelly at any time. But I find it coincidental that this took place around the Me Too movement era. Okay, the feminist exploitation era. Okay, we also saw Bill Cosby during this time. He was prosecuted and imprisoned uh, for rape charges that took place back in the 70s. Okay, so they've, they've done this several times with high-profile celebrities because these are the type of people that will get the most attention because their name has been in the public for so many years. 
You see, that's the game that they play. R. Kelly, 15 years, took them to prosecute him. Bill Cosby, four decades. You see that? So, I do not believe R. Kelly had any inclination that in 2015 that these news stories would be concocted in the forthcoming years to his detriment. Why? Because, again, when R. Kelly met Gail King at that party, I believe that they had these parties frequently. And there are a lot of sadistic things, a lot of perverted things that take place in these parties. And it will it's on film, but it will never be televised. Okay, so R. Kelly felt very safe because they permitted him in his private residence to do what he do. And in no way am I suggesting that R. Kelly is innocent. But according to the, the, the courts, okay, the judicial system, he must be innocent until proven guilty. So, they sicked CBS on him. Also, Gloria Allred and Gail King was sicked on R. Kelly, okay, to prosecute him in the courts of public opinion. And both of these women are members of witch covens. Okay? And now that's allegedly. Okay? That's my opinion. Then, of course, there was the acclaimed documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, where it was alleged that the actors were paid to depict themselves as rape victims and accuse R. Kelly. Yet, some of these people refused to take the stand under oath and subject themselves to perjury. Therefore, R. Kelly is due for a retrial and even an acquittal in the forthcoming months. In his 2015 interview, you can see in part one, R. Kelly's demeanor, he was very arrogant, saying he's going to go walk out of the interview, he's going to go play basketball, record some old music. Uh, he said he's going to go eat the McRib sandwich from McDonald's, saying, yeah, I, I, I make enough money to, to, to feed my kids, to send them off to colleges. And, and he was just very, very arrogant. And it was a complete 360 from this interview that I'll talk about with Gail King. Okay, so this interview obviously was not done for the purposes of him promoting his album, as I talked about in part one. Gail King wasn't playing any games with R. Kelly. He was getting straight to the point. Okay, and again, I believe it's because she's at a higher level of what, what some may call Babylonian uh, mystery school system, okay, uh, uh, Hollywood programming. She's tr she's trained to program assets, you understand? And I believe that R. Kelly, that Gail King may be a handler for R. Kelly, okay? She may have the, the, the access, the keys to his mental breakdown, okay? But I don't have time to get into that until later on. So, R. Kelly finally saw how serious the executives that be, the powers that be, how serious they were about him providing a blood sacrifice. I believe that also has something to do with this, and maybe R. R. Kelly stalled them, and he didn't pay his dues. So, they sicked CBS on him. Okay? I believe they gave him time uh, from 2004 to 2008 when he was acquitted and he still failed to provide a blood sacrifice. You understand? So even if it was 15 years later, they still were going to get him like they got Bill Cosby. You see that? So I'm going to play this interview between R. Kelly and Gail King and I'll step in every now and then to give my perspective on it. There is nothing inappropriate about their arrangement with the 52-year-old singer. 
Now, this interview was done in two segments at R. Kelly's suite in Trump Towers, Chicago. I believe these two young ladies went first in the interview process, and R. Kelly started his interview after them. But during their interview, R. Kelly is in the vicinity within listening distance. What is your relationship, both of you, with, with, with R. Kelly? We're with him. That's yeah, our relationship. We're with him. Yeah, we that's what it him. is. <laughs> and we're in a relationship with him. Right. We just said it. Uh -huh. A both, very strong relationship as both well. Both of you. Yes, yes, most definitely. You know, how do we say this without being inappropriate? Is this a three-way relationship, or do you each have a separate relationship with him? How does this work? Well, both I'm of curious. those. Yeah, Both we both have our individual relationships with him, and right. we all are family all together. We have our moments where we sit and watch movies all together. We go to amusement parks all together. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about Azrael going to movies and sitting and watching, uh, going to parks. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about is it a, is it a three way sexual relationship? Sexually, between, well, first of all, I'm not you? here to talk about my personal life, okay. and I would never share with no one what I do in or outside of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, I'm sure you would not either. Yes. No, I wouldn't. But I. But, okay then. But, so, no, yeah, no, you're next right. question. Okay, R. Kelly coached her up to give that response and play the woman card. At this point, I believe he knows the powers that be want to make an example of him for the sake of the Me Too movement. No, you're right. I would not. But this is a very different circumstance. It's and not I a different it's circumstance. A there question. are people all over the world who have multiple girlfriends. It's no different. Do both of you all believe you're in love with him? Of absolutely. Course. Yes, absolutely. Of course. Should your no. parents be concerned? No. Why? <clears throat> well, my parents knew where I have always been for four years. They have known. They know that I've been well taken care of. They never thought you were missing, Azrael. They just were wondering if you were okay. Well, my parents have actually came to Chicago and seen me a few times. They've, uh, I've talked to them. They stopped answering my calls. You know what they say? They say that you were are, you are brainwashed. You're, I talked to your dad last night. He says, my daughter is brainwashed and he's very concerned. He said he was here two days ago and you wouldn't even look him in the eye. Okay, I wouldn't look him in the eye because he's a liar and he's a manipulative liar. I'll tell you why they're concerned, Azurel, because they say she's 17. We found text messages that indicated that she was having sex with R. Kelly when she no. was 17. Is that true? No, that is a lie. That is not a lie, but according to the law, it must be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. But let's move forward. Prosecutors have charged Kelly with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. Authorities say three of the four alleged victims were underage when the suspected crimes happened. Now, Kelly has pleaded not guilty. Sources tell CBS News federal and state authorities in at least two states, New York and Illinois, are now investigating a variety of allegations. The singer, as you know, has faced intense scrutiny for more than a decade now. It was reignited in January after the Lifetime docuseries Surviving R. Kelly featured interviews with seven accusers and former members of his inner circle. They all say that Kelly preys on vulnerable women and young girls. I am surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. What are the lies that you're hearing that disturb you most? Oh, my God. Um, all of them. Um, got little girls trapped in the basement, helicopters over my house, mm -hmm. um, trying to um, rescue someone that doesn't need rescuing because they're not in my house, handcuffing people, starving people. I have a harem, uh, what you call it, a, um, a coat. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even really know what a coat is, but I, I know I don't have one, you know. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything that you regret? Have you done anything wrong? Lots of things wrong when it comes to women that I apologize, but I apologize in those relationships at the time I was in the relationships. Have okay? you broken any laws when it comes to women? Absolutely not. <laughs> Oh, man. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The six-part series interviewed 50 people, mm -hmm. family members, your former tour manager, numerous women who all claim that you abused them. Yeah. Were you saying everybody in that documentary was not telling the truth about you? Everybody? If, if, if you really look at that documentary, which I'm sure you have. I have. Everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. Mm -hmm. They was describing Lucifer. I'm not Lucifer. 
I'm a man. I make mistakes, but I'm not a devil. And by no means am I a monster. I'm going to name the names. Andrea Kelly, your ex-wife. Kitty Jones. Mm -hmm. Lisa Van Allen. Lizette Martinez. Jerron DePace. Mm -hmm. Faith Rogers. Yeah. Asante McGee. You're saying everything they said in that documentary about you is not true. They are lying on me. Why would these women say the same thing about you? That you are controlling, that you are abusive, that you tell women when to eat, when to go to the bathroom, when they can sleep, where they can dress. Why would all these women tell these different stories about you if they were not true? And they don't know each other. That defies logic to me. Right, right. Until you hear the explanation. You can start a rumor on a guy like me or a celebrity just like that. All you have to do is push a button on your phone and say, so-and-so did this to me, R. Kelly did this to me, and if you get any traction from that, if, you, if you're able to write a book from that, if you're able to get uh, a, a reality show, then any girl that I had a relationship in the past that I, it just didn't work out, she can come and say the same exact thing. Are you blaming this on social media? I'm talking about the power of social media. Okay, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Surviving R. Kelly women, they were actors. But you did molest the ones who didn't come forth. So, it is what it is. In 2008, R. Kelly was found not guilty on 14 counts of child pornography after prosecutors in Chicago failed to convince a jury that he was a man seen in a sex tape with a girl as young as 13. What do you want to say to your fans? Last month, Kelly was indicted again, this time charged with aggravated criminal sexual abuse of four women, including three who the charges say were minors at the time. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone under the age of 17? No. Never? No. I have to tell you, it's so hard to believe that based on all that we've read. I'm going to tell you something, Gail. There's one you. I'm going to tell you something. What women said about you. What women said about me. What women. So nobody's allowed to be mad at me and be scorned and, and lie on me. Mm -hmm. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. 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 You feel that people have maligned your character? I have been assassinated. I have been buried alive. But I'm alive. So I think the point you're making is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. That, Why would I? Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would it never be held for Mark Kelly with all I've been through in my way, way past to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said, what? How stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you That's were holding. That's stupid, guys. I didn't. Is this camera on me? Yes. It's on. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Don't forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through? Oh, right now, I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Well, you believe you would continue to get away with it because the synagogues, again, patiently waited 15 years before feeding you to the wolves. Robert, Stop it. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. Briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. His publicist helped calm him down. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're going to let the camera keep going. This is not true. This is not, doesn't even make sense. Why would I hold all these women? Their mothers and fathers told me we're going to destroy your career. But Kelly's emotions remained raw. Robert. It's real girls out there missing. It's real young girls out there being abducted, being raped, okay? They really are on chains. They really do have chains on their uh, on their wrists, and they can't get out. Robert, and they're ending up buried in deep. Robert, we have to have a conversation. Really, I, I don't want you just ranting at the camera. Well, I, think I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes, what kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart. Manipulation. Because my heart is so big. People betray me, and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly, you do. 
When I listen to you, I'm it just does sound the like truth. you're playing the victim. I'm just card. telling the truth. In this interview, he had no choice but to manipulate by playing the victim. He couldn't play games with Gail King like he did the young reporter at the Huffington Post. And the reason I'm emotional, but Robert, and I apologize you, for that, no, is no, because no, this no. is the first time I was able to, to say speak. something. Yeah. I've said nothing. Gail, you um, remained tough and calm throughout that. You see that? That's the agenda. That's why they came for R. Kelly. Strong, tough woman. Gail King is woman king. You see that? Well, I mean, it, w it wouldn't do any good if we both got hysterical, yeah. <laughs> or if we got if we both got very emotional. And you could see, uh, he he felt that in his mind everybody's lying. I said, but there's so many people who are telling the same story. And he kept going back, going back. I said, but the women don't know each other. And he said, how do you know it? they don't know each other on social media? You're connected. He thinks everybody's trying to do a book deal or they're trying to do a movie. And that really are, people are conspiring against him. I have to say, I've never seen anything like that. I don't know how that went on for oh, over an hour and a half. What was he like before the interview? Because you didn't really know him that well. No, I don't. I mean, in fairness, he didn't rant for the whole hour and a half. But he, he got very emotional several times. I met him maybe beyond a five years ago at a party where you just say, hi, how are you? A lot of satanic rituals, mind control program, and take place at those parties. Again. Perhaps Gail King may be a handler of R. Kelly. Five years ago, she may have been involved in fragmenting him psychologically, tormenting him through witchcraft in order to cast a spell on him to empower herself in this interview. She may have used trigger words to dismantle his composure he had in the 2015 interview. Because she's purposely wearing yellow for sun worship. Okay, these people worship Saturn. They, they worship the sun. They worship Baal. Okay. Or she may not have said anything to him at the party five years ago, prior to 2019. She may have just stared at him. Okay. But that she didn't have to say anything because I believe that there may have been some type of psychological programming done prior to that party to set R. Kelly up, to fragment him, to dismantle any type of uh, willpower that he would have to fight them in the legal system, okay? Gail King, Oprah, Beyonce, all of these top celebrities, these female celebrities, these liberal feminists, okay, they are all it ad adhere to the mother goddess. Okay. They adhere to Asherah. Okay, As Asherah was a, a deity. She was a Canaanite deity, a goddess. In the Old Testament. Gail King. She's a witch. Okay, The CBS logo. I don't know if you guys know this. But the CBS logo. Is the sun. With the, the eye. The one eye in the middle. Okay. Remember Eve's eyes were open. Do you see that? She wanted to be like God. So the sun. Represents enlightenment. Okay, the eye, the eyes, uh, the one eye symbolism represents the eyes are being opened. Their mind is being opened or programmed to the craft, to the occult. You know, it's not the time to say, remember we met five years ago? I hate it when people do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I did ask, can we have a, uh, have a conversation before the interview got started? I wanted to say we're going to give you a platform to say whatever you want to say. It's no secret that he lives at Trump Tower and in Chicago. So we went to his apartment there and we had a conversation. Um, and you walk into his apartment, there's a big welcome home. There's a Christmas tree uh, that he keeps up all year long since his mother died back in 1993. He's very close to his mother, misses her very much because it was her favorite holiday. Okay, now here they mention his mother because it's alleged that she is the one who R. Kelly suffered abuse from.
So he keeps the Christmas tree up all year long. It was like 90 degrees in there because he was resting his voice. He said he was going to be singing later. But what he is accused of is dastardly. Exactly. Exactly. Raping young girls repeatedly over decades. Mm -hmm. And I think what you did, Gail, was allow him to tell his story and to see, though, his behavior, his temperament, is I think what is probably what is most revealing of this interview as well. The pounding of the fist, the getting up. I was worried about you. I, I was actually worried about you when I saw the pictures. Well, it's funny, a favorite son, favorite daughter, and Oprah all called me and said, were you afraid? Did you think he was gonna hit you? I actually never thought that. I think that he was, I thought I might get accidentally clobbered. I thought I would ask, accidentally get clobbered. Oh, oh, he's clapping his fist. He's angry. This black man needs to go to prison. You see that? Strong black woman, you're so brave. That's their agenda. Public witchcraft. Let's, let's pro pro prosecute this black man. See, this, this, this is what they, they do. Okay? And this is what they did with Kyrie Irving. They, they like to suck the energy out of the black man, the so-called black man. Because this, this society can't function without the black man. They're always filming us, they're always uh, using us to entertain them because the so-called black man has the most God DNA in him, okay? Because God formed man from the ground. The original man was the so-called black man from the brown, the dark brownish ground, the earth, the soil. You see, so he has a he he has the highest capacity of of energy. This energy level, they they because they're witches, they they need to use that energy. But again, esoterically, Eve was always wanted to be like God. You see what I'm saying? So they have to exalt the woman because Satan can only rule through chaos. But they use he uses the woman to bring forth chaos. And that's why society is so fragmented and so disorderly and so antichrist. You see that? So this was the whole agenda by using R. Kelly again. I'm not saying that R. Kelly is innocent by any stretch of the imagination. But he does have a gift and he does uh, he he does attract a large audience, okay? And the gifts of God are without repentance. That doesn't mean that he's he's holy or that he belongs to Christ or anything, but that gift, God gave man a piece of himself, okay? So people are in love with the gift that R. Kelly has. That's why they defend him so much. But the evil powers that be want to use him for the feminist liberal agenda. And what I want you guys to take away from this is that in 2019, they used this whole series on R. Kelly at CBS to exalt Gail King as the woman king. And this also happened in Big Brother. When, when Taylor won Big Brother. Okay, and I've talked about that in previous videos. But anyway, let me know you guys' thoughts and enjoy the rest of your day.